Uh, we kind of worked on some situations. We worked on some blitz pickup situations with the defense, um, probably even more so than we would in a normal practice. We really focused on blitz situations and then uh, did some, some pass scales, some seven on seven stuff. And then we put the ball down and we let uh, either our younger guys or maybe some of the guys that we just still needed to get more information on uh, play a little bit much shorter than our first two scrimmages have been. And we held a lot of the older guys or guys that we kind of feel like we already have all the info on them, know what they can do. We held those guys out. So it was, uh, it was by no means a full uh, scrimmage compared to the first two. How different does the offense look under uh, Jeremy Johnson as opposed to uh, Newton? Uh, right now, it all looks pretty much the same. You know, we're running the same plays with all three of the guys that we're still rotating in there. And um, each one of those three guys probably does things a little bit different. Oh, I would say, um, you know, right now, I don't think there's any part of the offense that we could or could not run with either Jeremy or Nick over the other. I think they both could do the same, you know, could fulfill the same role for us as far as running the offense. There's a rumor going around that Nick Marshall can throw the ball 80 yards in the air. As an offensive coordinator, does that kind of make you uh, salivate a little bit? Well, I think that would make our offensive line coach nervous. <laughs> I mean, if he feels like he's got to protect long enough for us to throw it 80 yards, we've got some, some work to do up front. But uh, I haven't seen it yet. You know, I know that the guys, that, that really all three of those guys can still throw the ball deep. they got strong arms. So uh, a big part of what we do is, is trying to stress the field vertically, so that's a big plus. How's Nick been doing as far as protecting the ball? He had all those turnovers last season, fumbling, and also the interception. Uh, for the most part, all the guys have done a pretty good job. Uh, Nick's done well. You know, I think he's been very conscious of it. Um, you know, we only had him live for that one scrimmage. Uh, I don't think we had any turnover issues there uh, with him. And then, of course, in the other scrimmages and team situations, you got the orange jersey on, so you're not being hit as much. But we haven't thrown a lot of interceptions either, which has been positive. You guys work on that pretty early in practice. We'll talk a little bit about. That. Yeah, yeah. Really, across the board on offense, every position, we work on ball security every day. Uh, we have these ball bands we do and things to try to, uh, one, they're, they're functional and they have, a, they have a purpose actually fundamentally, but two, it's just to keep it constant on their minds. We're always stressing it. And then there's some things I do with the quarterbacks, you know, to always make sure they got two hands on the ball in the pocket. You know, that's what really is a quarterback, aside from throwing an interception or if you were running, you know, you're in the pocket and things start breaking down and you have to flush and scramble. A lot of times you drop it to one hand and that's when any D lineman can rip it out. And so, it takes discipline to be able to move, especially for athletic guys, move and keep both hands on it at all times. So that's something we work every day. Is there day. anything on film you saw with Nick last year, just the way he carried the ball, running it, that was careless at times? Uh, no, I think you know. I think a big part of, of the ball security at any position, but at quarterback, is is all just about attention to detail. And you you got to discipline yourself to to make that a habit. It's not something you can just think about every now. And you got to make it a habit, and and that's why we drill it every day. And that's why we have accountabilities. When we're watching film, if I see them with one hand on the ball, we're going to do accountabilities for that the next day to keep it in their head that it's got to become something that they don't think about. And uh, I've been really pleased with all those guys, but but him, you asked about specifically with with, uh, with the way he's been coachable to do that. I realize quarterback's such a different position, but can, does it help, Nick, that he's played in the SEC before, that he's played in huge games and situations like that? or? I don't know yet. I would think. Uh, I would think it'd be good that he's an older guy. When you come from junior college, you know he's played in this league for a year, so he understands that. And, and, and you're also two years older than your average young man coming out of high school. So there's just a, a, a from natural uh, maturity level that should exist. Um, and while junior college is not the SEC, it's maybe a step up from speed from from a lot of high schools. So having a year in that that can't hurt. Rip, with similar capabilities from both Nick and Jeremy, and similar reps thus far. What do either one of them have to do? What questions do you need answered this week that they haven't answered for you already? Yeah. Well, really, we still got three guys we're looking at. Um, we, we feel very confident. We know what Jonathan can do at this point from the spring and from the first two weeks of fall camp. And so we were honest with him and those guys that, you know, we're going to let the two new guys um, who don't have the same amount of reps. We don't, well, they don't have as many, and we haven't been able to evaluate them as much. We're going to let them get more of the reps this week instead of splitting it three or as we were doing four ways. Um, and I think it just always goes back to who's going who's gonna to earn the respect of their teammates. You know, who's the team believe in? Who's the offense believe in? Who's going to protect the ball? And who do we feel like we can trust that even if it's a simple game plan or a big game plan, that they're going to be able to execute what we ask them to do and, and, uh, and play within the system? You guys have mentioned this week several times. You've alluded to this week. Is the plan to make a decision at the end of this week? We don't have a, a day, but you know, you know, the quicker you can decide, then the quicker you can move on to preparing for your opponent and you can prepare for maybe getting uh, that continuity together. And, you know, we feel like we, 
Uh, we had four for a good while. We, we're now at three. Um, and I'll say this, guys, about Kyle Frazier. I mean, you talk about a young man who loves Auburn. Um, I don't know if I've ever been more proud of a young, young person I've coached than I am of Kyle right now. Um, because, you know, when you look at it at the quarterback position, I tell those guys all the time, I mean, it's, it's unfair, but it's reality. When you win, you get way too much credit. And when you lose, you get way too much blame. And, uh, he went through some stuff that, that not a lot of people go through. And I could be more proud of last spring, especially this summer and fall camp, the way he responded to those scenarios. And then at the end of the day, uh, he just came to us and said, hey, I want to help this team win. He said it was more important to him that Auburn get back to where he wants Auburn to be when he came here. And, um, you know, I think that was a, a pretty selfless act. But um, I want to make sure I said that. But now when you get to – the three guys and two guys, you start to kind of narrow down those reps. And it's not just a quarterback, it's at every position right now. Brett, is it going to be is it in the back of your mind if, if, if Jeremy separates himself, maybe are you nervous a little bit about the possibility of playing a true freshman quarterback in the SEC? Or has that even gone through your mind and do you think he can handle it? That's Well, I think anytime you play a guy that is either a true freshman or a guy who doesn't have any of that experience, you're always going to be a little anxious, I'll say. To, to see how they respond because it's one thing to do it in a live scrimmage situation that's controlled or in, in a practice where they got orange jersey on when you put 90,000 people in the stands how are they going to respond because good things are going to happen but bad things are going to happen and, and so that's one thing you're also looking for you know when you decide who, who am I going to go with it's who do I think that when it's really good they're going to be the same and when things get really tough they're going to be even killed they're not going to be rattled um, and I think a lot of it our job is to put someone in there that's ready. I mean, in fairness to whoever that becomes, you know, we got to feel like we're we're doing right by them, and that we feel like they're ready to handle that. Have the quarterbacks responded to pace and tempo so far? Very well, and you know, early on for for Nick and Jeremy, that's that's half the battle. Jonathan and Kyle have been used to it from the spring and from the summer. That's half the battle, getting used to the way we do things at that tempo. So not only are you asking them to learn a new system and learn reads, but you're asking them to do it at warp speed. Um, but they picked it up well. As a matter of fact, I'd say the last five or six practices, seven practices, I don't think we've had issues with communication or anything like that or tempo. Um, you'd have to go way back for me to even remember that issue being an issue. I think it's more now about the execution and the final details. Fred, you started to see separation of wide receiver because that seemed to be a group that had a lot of competition and no one had really stepped, stepped, yeah. stepped themselves apart. Yeah, I think that's another position. We're starting to see guys separate themselves. We're, feel, we're getting a feel for the guys that we know we can trust and count on. And, um, they're going to be where they're supposed to be. They're going to play without the ball. They're going to make plays when we need someone to make plays. So there's no doubt we've seen separation there as, as among other positions. Is Coach David Stevens a guy who can – Tony Stevens is a guy who can get in there. We heard he had a hamstring issue was out yeah. the other day. Yeah. Tony's a guy we, we just got to get more out of and see more. And, uh, you know, he, he has had something kind of holding him back a little bit. So the jury's still out on him. Uh, we do feel good about him. Uh, moving forward in the future, we feel like he's exactly what we thought he was when we recruited him. But in fairness to him, he, he's going to need more reps between now and then for us to know for sure. Coach Grimes talked about how he's, he seems pretty comfortable with four spots on the line. You talk about right tackle, how that's shaking out. It looks like a two or maybe three man battle. Yeah, and that's one of those deals that we're not necessarily set on what we're going to do yet, but it's not for lack of options. We feel like Avery, Sean, Pat Miller, all those guys are pretty good players. And, and not only do you look at who's going to be the best at that right tackle spot, but how does it work shuffling everything else from backup guards to centers to left tackle, you know, all those things will play into that decision. Um, and all three of those guys have, have really come along and gotten much better. So it's just going to be a matter of who wins that job will also alter kind of how we go in with our top six, seven, eight linemen going into a game. What are you hoping to see out of Jonathan this week since he won't be working with the first team? Yeah. Um, Jonathan, he's a winner, man. I mean. He responded right now just like I thought he would, um, you know, and he understands it. And he's always ready. And when he does get reps, like he got some reps today, he's, he's ready to take advantage of it. So, um, and he's done what, what you want an older guy to do, I and mean, he's been encouraging him. Uh, he's, he's been uh, the perfect team player, and, and I know that he's ready, and, and we'll, we'll start to uh, maybe adjust those reps accordingly throughout the week as we need to. But we just told him going into this week, we feel like we got a pretty good grasp on what your strengths are, what you can do. Um, you're not out of it. You're going to get still plenty of reps and just hang in there for the next couple of days. These two guys are going to get the bulk of the reps. we got to see how they respond. How do they respond ones-on-ones? -on -ones? How do they respond when good things happen, bad things happen? So when they get more reps, do they continue to get better? Do they stay the same and plateau out? Those are all things we got to see. You just can't see if you're rotating three or four guys. Reese is clearly the star of the 